Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. In the last episode of this uh, sort of mini-series, what we did, we created some interactable objects. Now, if you haven't watched that video yet, I do suggest you go and watch it because we're going to be reusing some of the scripts. So I'm going to pop a link up in the top right. If you haven't seen it, watch that first, then come straight back. But very basically, what we did, we have a little character controller, and whenever we enter the field of an interactable object, we get this little arrow. And if we press an interactable key, we interact with the object. As simple as that. But now we're going to reuse some of that code and we're going to start moving our player around the scene. So again, I just want to plug this sprite asset pack that I'm using for the tutorial. This is made by someone called Mucho Pixels, and you can find him on itch if you want to download this package for yourself and you can also find him on Instagram as well. Links are down in the description. Make sure you go and check him out. Really, really good pixel artist. So let's start by creating our door script. Every one of our doors is going to need it. So we'll just call that door to make everything simple and we'll open it up in Visual Studio. Now we don't need a start and an update and we won't be needing these system namespaces as well. So this is going to be an extremely short script. What we're going to do, we're going to inherit from our interactable class that we created in the last video and we're going to implement that abstract method. So this is going to be where we interact with the door. So what do we want to do? When we interact with a door, we want to fade out our screen to black. We want to move the player to the target position, so that's inside of the other house towards the next area of the game, wherever it may be, and then we want to fade that back into the game view. So one more thing that we're going to need in here is we're going to need a game object, we'll make that a public game object, and we'll just call it target. So let's work on the scene management. I've already gone ahead and created a small scene control script. Again, I do have a tutorial on scene control on my channel, I'll pop a link to that if you're interested in finding out a little bit more about smooth scene transitions. But very basically, all this is, is a singleton instance of our scene control script. We have a game object, which will be our player, which is gathered in our start method by using find game object with tag. And we also have a public image, which will be our fader. Now that fader is attached to our canvas, and all it is, is an image that is solid black. And I've set it to inactive by default. So in our scene manager script, uh, sorry, our scene manager game object, we have our scene control script on there and I've dragged and dropped the fader image in. So let's expand this scene control a little bit more. Well, we're going to need a core routine here because we want to take advantage of yield statements and specifically the wait for seconds method. We'll create a private IE numerator and we'll call this transition. So now transition is going to need to take in a vector 3 for the position that we want to place our player. So the first thing we can do is we can set player.transform.position equal to the position that we've passed in. But we also want to take care of our fading in and out as well. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set that fader game object to true. So we can do fader.setActive. Oops, sorry, that's fader.gameObject.setActive. And we'll set that to true when we call transition. And just to make sure that we get rid of it at the end, we'll set it to false after we've finished. Next, we're going to want a for loop. Now this for loop is going to take in a float f and we're going to start it at zero. I'm going to want to keep looping over this for statement until f is greater than one. So in a sort of while section, we'll do f is less than one there, and then we'll increment f by time dot delta time divided by a time step. In this instance, that's going to be 0.25 for me. And all we're going to want to do in here is effectively increase our image's alpha value from 0 to 1. So we do that by accessing the colour parameter of our fader, 
set that to a new colour and we're always going to want it to be black so that'll be 0, 0, 0 on the RGB scale but then the alpha value is the one that we're going to be amending here so like I said we want this to transition from 0 to 1 over the course of a specified time luckily Unity already has a method for this and that's in not meth mathf dot lerp so what lerp's going to do is exactly what we need it's going to take two float values one for the start position one for the end position and then a third for the amount of time that it's going to need to do that so we want to start at alpha zero completely transparent and we want to end on alpha one completely opaque and the amount of time that we want that to take is going to be f our float time up here and then because we're a core routine we will just yield return null so this will loop over and over until we're completely opaque now the player can't see what's happening we can move the player's position and then we're going to want to fade this back out to transparent so it's going to be exactly the same code but this time we're going to want to lerp from one completely opaque to zero completely transparent and just so we don't get any uh, unwanted visuals and the screen stays completely black until we've moved our player's position we can add a yield return new wait for seconds and we'll just wait for one second just to make sure our player's in position before we reopen up the game screen so this is going to be the main workhorse of our scene control completed but we want to be able to call this from elsewhere in our project and we don't want to have to start call routines from other scripts so the way that I'm going to do this I'm going to create a public static void and we'll call that transition player and that again is going to take in a vector 3 position and all that's going to do is call our instance dot start core routine we're going to start instance dot trans transition and we're going to pass in the position that we want the player to move to as easy as that so now whenever we want to move our player we can just call scene control dot transition player and pass in the target position so let's pop back over to our door and take advantage of that transition player method. So inside of our interact, whenever we interact with a door, we want to call scene control dot transition player and we'll pass in the target dot transform dot position as our target position. And we can go ahead and set this inside the inspector. We'll open up our exterior main and we'll find our door to the grey house we'll move this to the top so we can always find it so now all that we're going to want to do is drag and drop our door script onto our door as you see we've automatically been given a box collider it's automatically been set to is trigger and now the only thing left is to set our target game object but where do we want our player to end up when we enter this door well, I've gone ahead and created an interior. We'll enable that, and our interior is within the same scene, slightly above. So we have a living room, and then above that, we also have a kitchen. And we have some crude colliders here, just so we can't go past any of the bones. But all we need to do is, if we open up our living room inside our grey building, and we'll take our door. We can drag that into our scene, we'll put that inside of our living room, rename it door so we know exactly what it is, and we'll position this where we want it, which is right about here. And we'll copy and paste that here for a door to the kitchen, rename that as well, and then one last time we want to copy and paste that and put it inside of our kitchen. and we'll pop this up at the top here right in position so now that we have our doors in place we can map out where we want our movements so if we just open this up so we can see all three we want this door down here on our main street to transport the player to this door 
Similarly, if we go through this door, we want to go back to this position as well. And then with the kitchen, we want this door to go to this door, and then this door to go to this door. So we just select all three of our new doors and drag in the door script. Everything sets up for us as we like. All we need to do is add in our targets. So we'll start with our main exterior door first. And we'll find our target door, which is this one. And all we need to do is drag and drop that into our target. So we'll go ahead and do this for every one of our doors. So we'll select our door to the outside and we'll drag and drop our outside door in there. Then we'll select our door to the kitchen, drag our kitchen door in there, and finally we'll select the kitchen door and drag our door to the kitchen from the living room. Gets a little bit confusing when you try and say it out loud like this. But now our doors should be working. We should have an interactable door, which means whenever we go past a door, we'll be able to press our interact key. That'll fire off the interact method, which will then in turn call our scene transition and move us around our map. So let's give this a try. So we move, we see we get the arrow telling us that uh, that door's interactable, just like the bins were. We press our interact key and just like magic, we have ourselves inside of the house. And then we want to go to the kitchen. We're inside the kitchen. Back to the living room. Back outside. So I hope you watch both of these tutorials and I hope you can see how useful it is to make all your scripts or as many of your scripts as possible as generic as possible so we can easily reuse them. And just as one final test as to how easy this is, what I'm going to do, I'm going to decide that I want this dishwasher in the kitchen to be interactable. So what am I going to do? I'm going to select the dishwasher object, I'm going to drag Openable, the one that we created in the last tutorial, in, we get a box collider, and then I'll select my close sprite and my open sprite and we'll go and check that out. Into the house, into the kitchen. Now it's interactable and we can open it. So as you can see, this is an extremely useful tool. So I hope this has been of use to you. This tutorial's over. I'll see you again soon. I just want to say a huge thank you to my first supporter over on Patreon, GT3000. It's extremely appreciated, and I hope you like your purple Discord name. <laughs> and if you'd like to support us over on Patreon, please feel free to check the link out in the description. Thanks again, guys. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more bites as Unity hints and tips.